How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Kyle Corner. Well, South Dakota and Missouri State have gone to the wire in each of the past two seasons with late field goals, giving the home teams respective three-point decisions. Saturday, the two sides cross paths again in Springfield, with each of them seeking their first Valley victory. Kyle is hoping to spoil homecoming for the Bears and the 15,000 plus on hand at Robert W. Plaster Stadium. USD all about that pass early on. Opening drive, Kevin Earl sets up the screen for Trevor Bama, and he's got some help. Bama picks up 16 yards and a first down. Four plays later, Earl with a quick hitter to Brant Van Ruckel. Nice run after the catch. 12 yards to the MSU 32 and it would help set up this. Miles Bergner from 47 yards, and it is good. A new career long for Bergner, and it gives the Coyotes the early 3-0 lead. Bears didn't stay down for long. Off play action, Kiara Harris finds a wide open Malik Earl down the sideline. 53-yard pitch and catch for the score. Missouri State would lead 10-3 after one. Same score in the second, Harris at it again, fakes the draw and delivers an absolute strike to his tight end, Gannon Sinclair. That goes for a 29-yard touchdown and it extends the Bears lead to 14. MSU would strike again before the half. Harris flips it to Julian Burton. He gets in on what was technically a 12-yard pass, 24-3 Missouri State at the half. Third quarter, Coyotes looking to cut into that deficit, Kevin Earl not to be outdone by Harris, executes the zone read to perfection and scampers 23 yards to the MSU 36. That led to another Bergner field goal, this one from 34 yards out. He's now 12 for 12 on the season. After Missouri State answered with a touchdown, Earl has the Yotes on the move again. Ben Kramer gets upended at the Bears 10 yard line. First and goal, USD. Two snaps later, Jasper Sanders. From five yards out, fourth touchdown of the year for him, but it's too little, too late. Missouri State goes on to win it by a count of 31 to 12. Kiara Harris led the way for the Bears, accounting for 233 yards and four total touchdowns. For USD, Kevin Earl finished 22 of 39 for 165 yards. Trevor Bama had a team high 82 yards rushing on 12 carries before leaving the game with an arm injury in the fourth quarter. Bama was one of six Coyotes to be injured on Saturday. None of them returned to the game. Just a rough day all around for South Dakota, which drops to 2-5 and five overall and 0-3 oh in the Valley. We have confidence in our abilities. You know, we, we see it every day on the practice field. We work hard. Like, we spent, you know, nine months training hard with Jeb in the weight room, and we, we just we put in way too much of work for this this kind of outcome, this kind of result. We got to bounce back next week and have a different attitude and mentality, you know. And that's it. We got to get a win in the Missouri Valley. We can be a scary team if we just go out and and play like there's no tomorrow. And I think that's what we need to do. We just need to go out and fight and and just hold nothing back. It's tough, uh, you know. Losses just hurt the confidence, but. I think we'll bounce back next week. With top-ranked North Dakota State on the schedule next, the Coyotes are hoping to get healthy in a hurry. We'll get an injury update from head coach Joe Glenn when we come back. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. And welcome back to Kyle Corner. Jay Elson down at the Dakota Dome with head coach, University of South Dakota Kyle, Joe Glenn. And Joe, coming off a loss to Missouri State, 31-12, the final in Springfield on Saturday. Uh, let's take a look at it now. Things got off to an okay start for you for the second straight week. The offense took the ball, put points on the board on its opening possession, this time in the form of a 47-yard field goal from Miles Bergner. But what was a little unique about this drive was how you got there. Ten plays all of them designed pass plays. Uh, was that the plan going into this one? We package a lot of plays, mm -hmm. and sometimes you won't know until you get to the line of scrimmage whether it's going to be a run or a pass, and quarterback makes that decision, and that's the way though that drive went. Well, it looked good. You moved it right down the field. Got, like I said, got three points on the board. Uh, unfortunately, again, like last week, uh, the offense was unable to sustain that rhythm that they established early on, and this was particularly in the passing game. Kevin Earl, who completed four of seven for 42 yards on that opening possession, 
Uh, just 5 of 14 for 34 yards the rest of the half. Did something change for him, or was it just one of those days that quarterbacks tend to deal with from time to time? You know, he just he lost his rhythm a little bit and, and missed a few passes, and we dropped, had a drop or two. Uh, we just lost sync, and the other team got hot and scored, I think, four times in a row, and we were not able to answer, and it, it just was a horrendous first half for us. Uh, it, so you don't attribute anything to the hand. It's not an injury thing like no, the hand is still no, bothering. No, no, no. Okay. He's all right. All right. Well, uh, field position. Let's move on to that now. That, that was working against you uh, all day long in this one, and, and a lot of the credit to that goes to their punt game. Uh, he put six of them inside uh, the 20-yard line. Your average field position for the day was your own 18. Long drives are difficult enough to put together, let alone uh, when you have to do it consistently. Right. Well, we flipped the field on several of those drives. I mean, we had 20. Mm -hmm. I think 22 first downs. We did some things that uh, just don't show on the board, and we didn't finish drives. We got to finish uh, with the kick, but the kick's got to be an extra point. Mm -hmm. So um, we did some things, uh, you know, after you look back at it that, that were decent, but we just didn't get the ball in the end zone. And, and then when we did stop them, it was late, and then uh, they punted, and always we were always looking at about 75 yards. One other thing that really stood out about this game uh, was the injury situation. You guys had six guys leave the game on Saturday and not come back. Uh, running back Trevor Bama and right tackle Derek Chancellor were among them. What's the status of those guys going forward? Well, I know for sure Trevor's out. He broke his arm uh, and he'll have surgery on that uh, tomorrow. Um, and Derek Chancellor can't put weight on his foot. They're going to x-ray it. Uh, I think I let the swelling go down a little bit, but I saw him yesterday and he, he can't put any weight on that foot. I'm a little bit worried about him. I'm sure, of course, that, you, that you'd love to have all hands on deck for this next opponent because they don't need much of an introduction. Top ranked three time defending national champion North Dakota State comes to the Dome on Saturday. You've played the Bison in Sioux Falls, you've played them in Fargo, but this is your first chance to host them here in Vermilion since you joined the Valley. How do you make that a memorable experience? Well, a win. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great. Uh, we're going to have to play better than we have. Uh, it's got to be our best effort, there's no doubt. But this is a challenge, and I think our team needs to rise up to that challenge right mm -hmm. now. And uh, we got to get things turned around. We got to get on the right track. We got to get making plays. Uh, we're making some progress. I thought uh, Saturday. I thought Miles Bergner uh, punted well. Mm -hmm. uh, Forty some yard at 43 yard average. He had uh, two more field goals to make. I think 15 in a row for him. And we covered punts better. Uh, than we have. Uh, we're making some progress in some areas, but we just got to make some plays, offense and defense. All right, Joe. Well, thanks a lot for your time again this week. Good luck Thank to you, you this week and against the Bison. We'll have more on USD's impending battle with North Dakota State in a bit, but first, ESPN 1570's John Thayer will help us read the story of the Coyotes' loss to Missouri State. That's next on Coyote Corner. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by BillionAuto.com. And welcome back. Well, the story of USD's 31-12 loss to Missouri State is pretty clear by now, and here to help us read it is the best pinch hitter in the business, John Thayer from KVTK ESPN 1570 in Yankton, stepping in for Andre Fields this week. Thanks for joining us, John. Let's hit Saturday's storyline, shall we? Big plays played a major role in this game for Missouri State. The Bears scored on plays of 53, 29, and 20 yards on Saturday. Two of those came through the air, were long pass plays, uh, and came as a result of, of busted coverage. Yeah, they did. The first one happened uh, against Steve Tellefson. He just got uh, sucked in on, on a play and uh, got beat over the top. And I think it looked like maybe he thought he had some help over the top and that help wasn't there. The second one, uh, linebacker coverage on a tight end. It was a, a simple play action play. Mm -hmm. uh, linebacker stepped up and left the tight end open down the field, and you can't recover once you make that big step. Yeah, on the flip side of that, though, USD didn't have anything like that. That's actually been kind of a problem all season. The home run play, the potential game-changing play, it just hasn't been there. What's missing for this team? Well, I keep thinking they've got to get a big play on defense, whether it's a turnover for a score, maybe on special teams. Seems like a turnover on defense or a score on special teams can really energize the team. And also, when you've had a quarterback situation the way USD has, mm -hmm. timing isn't quite there yet with the uh, quarterbacks, and they haven't had that home run ball downfield, as you mentioned, like they did, let's say, last year in their win at UNI. They had those big home run balls. Yes, absolutely. Well, the Cows did take a shot downfield on their first drive of the game, but 
Kevin Earl overthrew Eric Schufer by just a touch, and that turned out to be a sign of things to come for USD. Uh, the quarterback, Kevin Earl, just a little bit off on Saturday. He was 9 of 21 in the first half, 22 of 39 for the day. Uh, and here's what he had to say about that. They did a good job, Missouri State. Uh, you know, they, they did a good job confusing me a bit. Um, take me off my reads and uh, just, just trying to make things difficult on me. So, I mean, I, I can't really say why I missed some of those throws, but... Um, you know, it's, it's something I'll remember, and, and I'm not going to let, uh, you know, eat me up. And I'm just going to know next time when they're open, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the ball in the money. Uh, now, a guy that throws it as hard and as often as Kevin Earl is going to have days like this, John. So I don't think there's really much to read into this. Uh, and it sounds like Earl is pretty confident that he's going to bounce back from this quickly. Well, yeah, absolutely. He's confident in himself, and he should be. We saw how good he can be mm -hmm. uh, last year. We saw how good he can be. He was decent against Northern Iowa coming back from injury. This is not the Kevin Earl we're going to see all year. Right. Uh, no accuracy on the other hand of this issues for Miles Bergner this season. The sophomore kicker hit two more field goals, including a career long of 47 uh, in the loss to Missouri State. He's now 12 for 12 in the season. Looks like the guy the Coyotes have expected him to be. And he's frankly as confident as any kicker in the country right now. Yeah, he is. And he'll take, uh, he'll take practice kicks from 60 yards, 55 yards. I mean, he'll take those shots. And it, you want sevens, right? You want touchdowns in this game. But when you drive down the field, if your drive stalls and you know you got a guy like Miles Bergner who's sitting there and can uh, get, a, get a field goal and you're confident in that, always good to at least get points. Yeah, you're absolutely right, John. And, and on top of that, he's been much better in the punt game as well, which has is, is been nice to see him uh, rebound from some of the struggles we saw last year and earlier on uh, this season. He's doing much better in that department. Finally, we've got to talk about the injury situation. The Coyotes had six guys leave the game on Saturday and not return, including running back Trevor Bama and right tackle Derek Chancellor. As Coach Glenn told us a little bit earlier, it's a broken arm for Bama. He is done for the season. Uh, and it sounds like there's a decent chance the Chancellor uh, could be done as well. He injured a foot. Yeah, it's really tough. Uh, when you've got a young team and you're, you're trying to build a program, you don't have the depth that you'd like to have at this point. But for, for USD to see these injuries, it just it's like pouring salt in the wound right now mm -hmm. for these guys. And really unfortunate. You just hope that some of these guys can get back, they can get healthy. But on the positive side, you're going to get some guys in there now who are going to get more reps, and it's going to help to build your program stronger. Absolutely. There, and there actually has been some good news on the injury front over the past few weeks, and we're going to have more on that in a bit. But up next, we'll preview the Coyotes' much-anticipated showdown with number one North Dakota State. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. And welcome back. Well, as the three-time defending national champions, North Dakota State owns one of the more impressive resumes in all of college football, let alone the FCS. Saturday, the top-ranked Bison will make their first appearance at the Dakota Dome since 2002. NDSU is 7-0 overall and 3-0 in the Valley after Saturday's 34-17 win over an improved Indiana State team. That was the Bison's 31st consecutive victory. Now, Scott Miller has seen every one of those wins, and the longtime voice of the Bison joins us now on the phone. Scott, Chris Kleiman replaced Craig Bull as head coach following last season, and it seems like the Bison have hardly missed a beat. What, if anything, though, do you think has changed under climate? Well, that's an interesting question. I think that the Bison started off with that come from behind win at Iowa State, and then everybody thought, well, they haven't lost anything. They're still terrific, and they are undefeated through seven games. They've gone through some growing pains. They, at times, have not finished some drives and have settled for field goals rather than touchdowns, but I think the offense has really come around. Despite the fact they lost 23 seniors from a year ago, they've got 18 seniors back, and I think these guys are playing at a really high level. How about quarterback Carson Wentz? He's had some tremendously large shoes to fill in replacing NDSU legend Brock Jensen. What's impressed you about him? His poise in the pocket and his ability to make plays, he does get flushed from the pocket. He arguably has a stronger arm than Brock Jensen. I've been impressed not only with that, but the fact that he seems to have command of the huddle and the offense as a whole. He's played at really a high level, and I think he's only getting better and more confident as time goes on. 
Now, as good as the offense has been, I think most would agree that the defense has been the backbone of this team for the last several years. The Bison are awful good on that side of the football once again. How does this group compare to the defenses of the past few years? Last year's defense, I thought, was probably the high watermark. The Bison have led the FCS in scoring defense each of the last three years, and they're number one in the nation right now again. But I think that this defense is coming close. As, as we move forward, they're getting the great linebacker play from Travis Beck and Carlton Littlejohn and Esley Thornton, the converted quarterback. Their secondary is very good. You've got Kyle Emanuel, whom his head coach Chris Clemens says is the best defensive end, if not the best defensive player in the FCS at the end, and he now has eight and a half sacks and 14 total uh, tackles for loss. You've got him at one end, Mike Hardy at the other end, and the younger guys on the inside have actually come along really well. All right, that again was Scott Miller, the voice of the North Dakota State University Bison. Number one, NDSU again at South Dakota this Saturday, and it is sold out. But the good news is if you don't have a seat at the Dakota Dome, you can see it right here on Midco Sports Network. Andre Fields and I will have the call for you with coverage kicking off at 2 p.m. Well, a few Coyote starters will be forced to watch that one from the sidelines. Two others have worked their way back to the field, but the paths they took were very different. Alex Heiner has that story next. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by BillionAuto.com. And welcome back to Coyote Corner. Well, we've talked at length about the latest round of injuries that the University of South Dakota football team sustained this past weekend against Missouri State. However, it's not been all bad news of late on that front. As two weeks ago, two Yote starters returned to action after being sidelined for the better part of the first half of the season through very different circumstances. For more on these Coyotes on the comeback trail, here's Alex Heiner. For juniors Kevin Earle and Nick Jacobs, the 2014 football season was slated to be one to remember. After all, Jacobs was set to begin his third campaign as a key starter on the defensive line, while Earle was the reigning Coyote Offensive Player of the Year and had been named a team captain, entering what was to be his first full season as the starting quarterback. But for both players, things didn't go according to plan right from the outset. For Earl, his season was halted after only two and a half quarters of play, when his throwing hand hit a defender's helmet in the season opener against Oregon. I don't know, like really, if it was broken or what, if, or the ligament was messed up. But um, I mean, I've hurt my thumb times before, and this one was probably the worst. It happened at North Dakota State last year, and thought that he just jammed it or possibly dislocated. I didn't think that he'd break it, and then when he did. Um, you know, he, he was pretty down. and For us, it's next man up. Doesn't matter who gets hurt, but, but for, the, for the young man, it's tough. After undergoing surgery in Chicago a week after the break, Earl was told it would be five weeks before he'd play again. He would return right on schedule. I don't know, it was just a, a will to get back on the field and be around my guys and my teammates. Uh, I mean, it was, it was tough. I, it was painful even coming out to practice and trying to just lightly throw the ball just to, so, just to show the guys I was making progress and I was almost there. Like, I just had to fight through it. While fighting through it fast-tracked Earl back to the field, the ailment that kept Nick Jacobs away from action wasn't as easily overcome and it was considerably more dangerous. I got a fever like mid-fall camp and it was, uh, it was just different. I kind of felt like something was off. I couldn't really eat and I got uh, really sick and hot all the time and I was like well this is something's not right here obviously. One day in meeting was I asked my hair man you losing weight he's like, oh, I don't know and then next thing you know he was in the hospital. I uh, ended up getting a virus and was uh, hospitalized actually for five days. I couldn't eat, I couldn't swallow. It was uh, ulcers and infection in the esophagus. I lost like 15 pounds in a week so it was uh, it was brutal. The weight wasn't difficult to put back on, but it was an enlarged spleen that sidelined Jacobs longer than originally thought. About three, four weeks ago, they said, oh, you know, Nick, you're gonna be good to go, you're gonna be good to go, and uh, saw a specialist in Sioux Falls, and he said, you're not good to go. So uh, it was frustrating, but, you know, I told myself that I'll be back. You know, I never gave up hope or lost hope that I would be back this season. 
After six long weeks of waiting, both Earl and Jacobs returned to the field on October 11th against Northern Iowa. The time away, combined with the Dakota Day's atmosphere, made it all the more special. I can't even describe how it was, honestly. We had the new uniforms, you know, just being out, all the fan sellout crowd, the student section was great, and uh, felt good to hit somebody again, to be honest. It was uh, a long time coming. Now healthy, Earl and Jacobs are set to pick up where they left off last season, only now filled with a greater sense of appreciation for the game they love. I've never been denied football. I've never, you know, thank the Lord, had an injury or been out for an extended period of time and this hit me and you know it was adversity but we overcame it got back on the field and I mean that feeling was just amazing being back. It really starts to you know make you appreciate every every practice you get every chance you have to prepare you know for a week and to prepare for that Saturday um, and especially me you know my, you know, my clock at USD is starting to tick down and I just want to you know be on the field every opportunity I can get. Kevin Earl and Nick Jacobs, two great examples of student athletes overcoming adversity this season. Both are leaders on this team on their respective side of the football. USC will be counting on them to provide some inspiration come Saturday against the top ranked Bison, Jay. All right, thanks, Alex. Again, first meeting between the Coyotes and the Bison in Vermillion since 2002. South Dakota would love to be the team to snap NDSU's 31 game winning streak. You can see it live right here on Midco Sports Network. For those of you that will be in Vermillion. Be sure to stop by our Midco SN tailgate party between 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. for some free food and a little Midco SN sweat. Now, between now and then, don't forget to check out MidcoSN.com for the latest on USD football with the Kyle Quarter video blog as Alex and I take another look at the matchup with the Bison in a post on Wednesday. All right, that is our time for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next week for another episode of Kyle Quarter.